Hey, what's good? How's everybody doing? This is George Truly, the one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast. This is episode 159. Um, I'm going to get into a couple NBA topics, and then we're going to get right into it. And starting episode 160, I'm going to start doing some reacts. I downloaded a few libs of TikTok, and I'm going to react to those starting next episode. Um, don't forget that this podcast goes to YouTube. Facebook, um, Instagram, Rumble, and then I'll stream the video live on three of the Twitter accounts, Twitter at Paul P. Podcast, Twitter at Paul W. Pickett, and Twitter at Indy Castle or Urban Obsessions. And definitely follow on Rumble because the videos are monetized there already. And don't forget the audio version goes to Spotify, Apple, Amazon, Deezer, TuneIn, Stitcher, Slacker iHeartRadio, Player FM, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, and much, much more. Um, before I get started, let's give you a word from one of our sponsors. Cool Me and my team will never be link up. They're going to be drink up. We sit down and relax and have few glasses when there's things to think about. Like I'm nice with the bars when I tend to the bars and I'm not talking drink ups. So tell the bartender that's tend to the bar to please pass me a big cup up. And tell that waitress is waiting on us to put a little ice in it. Now watch the ice become weightless like the spaceships that I be sitting in. No waiting list, another waiting for that tropical twist. That'll take a taste for Now taste some. Now I insist it's the Gizzle. That's right, Dizzle, premium luxury liqueur, a mixture of agave, tequila, cognac, and orange liquor mango mix. Check them out. Do you Dizzle? Yes, I Dizzle. Dizzlebrand.com. Click on our locations, and you'll see all the locations for Dizzle Brand. And the top three links on that page are online order links where you can order your very own bottle or bottles of Dizzle premium luxury liqueur. Must be 21 and over, shipping and handling is included. And also, they have the Dizzle brand merch store where you can get the hats, get the t shirts as well. Check them out, dizzlebrand.com. Um, a couple of NBA things. Um, Westbrook just picked up his 47 million player option. Psh, go figure. I mean, who's leaving 47 million on the table except a freaking complete idiot? Kyrie picked up his thirty-five million or thirty-two million, whatever it is. Who's leaving? Like, like Kyrie Irving was really going to leave thirty million on the table and go play for ten million. Who would do that with a complete idiot? You know, um, makes me think of like Dennis Schroeder, like players like him that totally overplayed their hand and overbetted on themselves. Dennis Schroeder could have been had a big contract with the Lakers and even if the Lakers had traded him he would have still had that contract and he overplayed his hand you know he overplayed how good he really was and because they'd be having an agent in their ear telling them you know info sometimes that really ain't the reality and Kyrie, that's the thing Kyrie you know the Nets pretty much did what um I guess I think it was Matt Barnes said that um Don Nelson used to do when players to come in and tell them they want to be traded. All right, go go out there, find somebody willing to deal, and I'll do you. And Kyrie, and a lot of people want Kyrie. That's the thing. Kyrie, after this Brooklyn stint, if he doesn't stay with Brooklyn, he don't get no kind of extension. He's going to end up being a journeyman, or he's going to probably retire. Kyrie is probably going to retire. I think Kyrie Irving retires early because he ain't going to want to be a journeyman. Not like Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook could go ahead and be a journeyman if he has to. Um, John Wall and Houston Rockets agreed to a buyout. He's supposed to be going to the Clippers. That's interesting. Clippers, um, Paul George, John Wall, and Kawhi Leonard, and Reggie Jackson, and I think Marcus Morris is the one they got. That's interesting. That's an interesting team. Very interesting team. Um, Kyrie coming back for Brooklyn. I don't think Kyrie plays for Brooklyn after this one more year. And Kevin Durant might be gone too. And and they'll probably be split split ways. Because if Kevin Durant and Kyrie like team up and go to another team again together, like I gotta question everything about Kevin Durant's choices and legacy. You know, I really do. 
I mean, he's won his two rings. I he's you know, I'm pretty sure he's content. But you know, I guess he just wants to spend more time on social media just barking back at people and whatnot. But um yeah, the, the John Walter the Clippers is interesting. Westbrook coming back to the Lakers, that's going to be – if the Lakers miss the playoffs again, oh, my gosh. You best believe LeBron's going to be leaving. Uh, Brooklyn probably ain't going to extend Ky- – like, that's the thing. Kyrie is going to have to come out and ball. He's going to have to ball out all year long. He ain't going to be able to take no breaks just because some, you know, something happens like the January 6th incident. Like, everybody still had to go to work after that. Come on, man. You talking about privilege, boy. Athletic privilege is is, is something. Um, I'm going to get into voting issues. What do I think is going to be the top voting issues coming up these midterms and 2024 election? Um. I know abortion right now is the one that people go crazy over. They're getting starting to get a little, little violent over. Um, I'm gonna start with abortion. I ask myself: Are the people that are gonna be voting based on the doctrine in the schools, like CRT and transgender and the pride flags and the pronouns? What's their take on abortions? Well, they they got kids, so I'm pretty sure they're against abortions. So abortion isn't going to affect people's um, voting views that are voting based on their kids being a doctor in school. And there's there's a lot of parents that are going to vote that might be at the top of the list. Like they might inflation might not be hitting some of these parents as hard. You know, the these middle class American parents might at the top of the list, they might have the school and doctrines, like the transgender. And I'm not even just gonna go off just CRT. And cause it, it's just it's not even that they got courses in elementary and middle school based on CRT or transgender. What it is is these teachers are going rogue. So parents want to stop that. They want to stop rogue teachers from even being able to try to indoctrinate their, their kids with transgenders or pronouns or, you know, multiple sexes and genders or CRT, whatever it may be. So those parents definitely ain't going to care about abortion. And inflation, if if they got a doctrine at the top of their list, inflation is probably at the second second on their list, or maybe guns. Um, I ask myself, I right, abortions. I know um, abortions is really going to be at the top of the voting issues for selfish women. Gold digger women. Um, and I don't even know if the gold diggers are gonna put abortion at the top of the list. So let me take that back. The selfish, the selfish women, the cheating women, um, the women that don't want the career orientated women. Um, I don't know that too many men are gonna put abortion at the top of the list. Maybe transgender men, because they're biological women. That's about it. Transgender men and you know, career oriented women, selfish. Career oriented people are pretty selfish. I'm pretty. I'm a career oriented person. I'm pretty selfish. I mean, like, I don't know. I don't like. I don't want to share my home with nobody. I'm. I'm. I'm just like. I, I like my space. I like staying to self. Um, I work from home. I like focusing on my work, focusing on my business. I don't really want to have to um, be responsible for another person. And that's another thing. Abortion doesn't really affect me because I, I don't have kids. But I'm just thinking about who's really going to who's really gonna put abortion at the top of the list. Just to me, career-minded women, which are like selfish women or women that cheat, and transgender 
men, which are biological women. Um, the guns issue. Um, most of the people that are going to have a problem with the guns issue will be parents, like having problems with the school shootings. I don't know that all the other mass shootings are going to be included. And me and my friend were talking about um, how they don't really include gang shootings as mass shootings because it's not random. They're going to shoot an intended target. But then you, a lot of innocent people get killed in those intended gang shootings too. So to me, when multiple people get shot, whether what the whatever the tensions are, when multiple people get shot, whether it's random or intended, it's a mass shooting once it reaches a certain amount of people to me. Um, but they don't put gang violence at the top of the list. That's the thing. It, it's a lot more worse than the school shooting. There's way more ga- gang shootings than just like the the – the hospital shooting or the school shooting or the department store shootings. It's a lot more gang shootings. I, I put them all in the same bunch. I don't know. Like, guns is a tough one because there's millions of illegal guns on the streets. And if you take away everybody's legal guns, the, the criminals are going to be licking their chops with all those illegal guns and we'll all be victims. So... Nobody really thinking about that realistically. And the Republicans that, yeah, they might have to, they, they have to be some control, but they want to go further than control with the guns. They want to, they want to just take away the guns. So abortion, um, I mean, it's going to be a big one. I don't know if it's going to swing people back to the Democratic vote. It really depends on how inflation goes. Um, the doctrine thing ain't going nowhere because they're, they're, a lot of these rogue teachers ain't going nowhere. And I'll be reacting to some of those um, libs of TikTok tomorrow. Um, this is the thing. Inflation is going to be... Inflation is really going to determine all of this. If inflation, gas prices, food prices, every, energy prices, they all keep going, going up then that's going to be the number one voting issue. It ain't going to be abortion or guns. You know, when people just get broker and broker and broker and broker and broker, they don't have no money left to do nothing. That's the one that's going to be a top. And this is the thing. Inflation and legal immigration, they go hand in hand. Inflation and illegal immigration go hand to hand. So if inflation becomes the number one issue, you guarantee illegal immigration is going to be in that two or three mark. Um, But yeah, the main issues I would say was guns, abortions, inflation, legal immigration, and indoctrination in the schools. Do I think this is personally the, the inflation is always going to be, Inflation is always going to be one. We do need to get legal, legal immigration on the hand. We really look like an incompetent country, a very weak, incompetent country. Um, nobody has – that's the thing. Nobody has a problem with immigration. You know, my brother-in-law, he, he's Philippines. His parents are from the Philippines. Nobody has a problem with legal immigration. We just got a problem with illegal immigration. You know, Dems don't care about – they don't care about anything illegal. That's the thing. Democrats don't care about anything illegal. You could they don't care if you steal a thousand dollars worth of stuff. They don't care if you build out, burn down businesses. Um, they don't care about none of that. They don't care if you bribe somebody at gunpoint, you know, as long as you don't kill them. We don't care. So yeah, they don't that's another thing. The crime. I, I forgot that. I gotta throw that in. Crime is getting out of hand in a lot of these democratic um, cities. And I don't know how much that's going to be swayed to vote Republican, but like business owners, 
uh, that see crime got the ha- going crazy. Uh, regular people that see crime going crazy with like people just running up and stealing a thousand nine hundred fifty dollars worth of stuff and walking out because you can steal a thousand dollars worth or less and it's a misdemeanor. Um, yeah, man, crime is always going to be one. It's yeah, there's a lot of issues. I just don't know abortion. Like abortion people are really selfish. They're anti-life people. They're not people that I really want to be associated with one one bit. Now the guns I can understand. There that does I I do agree that it might be to raise the age to 21. But then you gotta raise the age of military to 21. You know, like as far as sending soldiers to war, you can't be sending 18 year olds to war and they can't be buying no gun on like legally on the from a pawn shop that just that that doesn't add up to me um definitely raise the gut age i don't know that now as far as automatic weapons i don't know man like i don't know that we need those i don't know why we can't just have like can't just settle with shotguns and and rifles and um things of that nature i don't you know i I know they always make the argument that um just in case you know we had like government just gets tries to get too too um too out of hand and too controlling and too dictatorship you know we got to stand up as a anarchy and, and fight back um i understand that that aspect I understand that aspect um guns is always gonna be a tough one it's hard for you to take away somebody's right to defend themselves i mean you take away guns i'm gonna tell you right now you take away legal guns that would be the worst solution in america i promise you that'd be the worst solution in america it would literally turn into the wild west for real it'd be a free for all every man for thyself um, cops won't be able to get there in time to save your life. Um, I don't know how big the doctrine in the schools are going to be because I don't have kids. I know my sister is a teacher. I know she's not big with people like telling her kid, you know, trying to force some indoctrine into her kids that she doesn't agree with, you know, like transgenders and pronouns and non-binaries or even some of the CRT stuff where, you know, white people are born oppressors and, you know, my niece and nephew haven't oppressed anybody. That's freaking horseshit. That's bullshit. You know, anybody if that's feeding that kind of doctrine that my niece and a nephew, just because they're born white, they're oppressors, that's horseshit. My niece just walks around and with a freaking baby doll. They plays with a baby doll at age eight and nine, and my nephew is eight. He's eight, and all he cares about is just Legos and building blocks. Man, get the fuck out of here. What the fuck are y'all talking about? They don't even know what transgender and tr- women and men are, pronouns and non-binary. They don't even care about that shit. They're little kids. They're just trying to enjoy life, man. Live life as kids because once you hit 18, man, you grow. I guarantee once they hit 18 and grow up, they, they better have a plan. They better have a plan. Because my sister and her husband ain't going to enable them forever. They're not going to take care of them forever. And they raise their kids right. They're good kids. Good, decent, honest human beings. And who knows? As they get older, they might choose to do a 180 and be the complete opposite. You know? But she's raised them as best you can. I've never seen a, a parent as good as my sister in my entire life, you know, and I agree with her when it comes to some of this, this indoctrine stuff they teach in these kids. And I always put it come from the lens of what I do, do what I like this to be taught to my, my niece and nephew, like abortions, niece and nephew. That's how I look at it from the lens of, of my eyes. I got niece and nephew. I got godchildren too. You know what I'm saying? My godchildren wouldn't be here if their 
mothers had abortions and that their mothers didn't have none of the like a lot of their mothers didn't have good financial situations either and they still had their kids you know what i'm saying you know and they let the kids to death even though they had good financial situations and stuff like that and they probably could have had better financial situations and raised them in a better financial situation and but the god children have seemed to turn out all pretty good you know even though some of them have been raised in poverty situations you know because at the end of the day you still got to teach your kids right from wrong you know even if you're teaching your kids from a rich standpoint of view or a poverty standpoint of view you got to teach them right from wrong you know what i'm saying and at least what mankind says right from wrong because these things have consequences even though I would prefer to follow the laws of nature, I can't because the laws of man have consequences <laughs> that will lock me up in jail and, and things of that nature. Or the laws of man have consequences that could get you killed, you know, and whatnot. But, yeah, I, it's hard to say what would be the number one driving point. But if I had to guess, I would say it would be inflation. Inflation be number one. I would say crime would be more worse than like come voting wise. I'm more worried about how bad the crime is than uh, can women get abortions. Um, and guns and crime that goes hand in hand. Um, the legal guns, at least. That's another thing. You got the people that want to, they want to get rid of guns and defund the police. What do you think that leads to? We're all dead. We're all digging our own graves. You know, how long inflation lasts, I think is going to dictate if any one of these things becomes number one in the voting point. If guns or abortion or that's the thing. Guns and abortion are coming up very strong. If I had to say the three main things that the media is pushing is guns, abortion, and inflation. Um, Media-wise, they're overlooking illegal immigration and doctrine in the schools and crime. Well, most of the mainstream media is all but Fox. Fox definitely highlights illegal immigration and doctrine in schools and crime, but and inflation, you know, um, Fox doesn't so much. They're pretty much not pro-abortion, and I think Fox has enough common sense to know that this gun control that the Democrats are pushing for is is just the first step to them trying to take away the guns, ban guns, you know? And and I do agree there needs to be some form of control. Maybe, yeah, as far as school shootings, if we move it up, the age is up to 21 and over, yes, that should eliminate the school shootings. But that still doesn't eliminate the guy that goes up in the hospital and plans to kill the doctor because he's got back pain from his surgery. That still doesn't you know, stop the crazy, you know, cracker, you know, Caucasian cracker from going up in um the department store the in a predominantly black neighborhood and just start randomly shooting people. That doesn't stop that, you know what I'm saying? Um that's mental health issues. And all of them really are tied to mental health issues. You know, it's not just a gun issue. Crazy people are still going to find ways to do crazy things. You take away the guns, they'll just do crazy things with other things. Then they'll just use a, um, you know, a sledgehammer, a baseball bat, a knife, you know. And to be honest with you, I'd rather somebody shoot me once with a gun, like it, shoot me once with lung, like yeah, shoot me, like shoot me once in the body with a gun and stab me in the body once knives could kill you faster than guns people and most domestic cases are done with knives some are with guns but um 
people are still gonna kill regardless. They'll just kill. We take away the guns. They'll just be killing with with their bare hands more. They'll just beat be beat people to death more. You know, they'll, they'll stab people to death and beat them with baseball bats and sledgehammers and crowbars and whatever else. You know what I'm saying? It'd be even more violent of a killing. It you know, beating somebody with a baseball, beating somebody to death with a baseball bat or a crowbar. Like what happened to the kid of LeBron James? He got beat to death. I mean, that's it takes a certain person to beat somebody to death. I mean, it takes a, a very heinous human being. And when three three people are beating one person to death, it takes three heinous individuals to beat somebody to death, especially over shooting them with a water gun. Like, I'm not going to beat nobody to death shoot via water gun. I don't know they're going to even fight nobody. Like, unless it gets too out of hand where they just, you tell them to stop and they keep spraying you in the face or something like that, then you, then, yeah, you got to punch them in the mouth one good time and, yo, because I told you to stop. But beat somebody to death over a water gun. If people would do that, what do you think getting rid of guns is going to do? Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. I think inflation is going to be the number one issue. It doesn't seem no so no signs of um, slowing up. As long as this war goes on further, I know um, it will have some effect. As long as illegal immigration is going on like it is, it will have some effect. Um, as long as we keep sending money to Ukraine and just sending money here and there, print money here and there, that's going to have an effect. Um the supply has an effect. Everybody goes and buys everything all at once. I mean, I wanted to go buy hot dog buns the other day, and there's no hot dog buns. You know, um, you got just so many different things you have shortages of. I went, I ordered two cases of water from Walmart this morning. They were out, had to go to the Dollar Tree and get some water, you know, like. Yeah, man, it's times is hard for a lot of people, man. Like, you know, everybody ain't been smooth selling with they 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 financial situations and stuff like that. You know, and when people live and check the check, you know, they're not like me. I look, you know, I make money on the daily. I got budgets coming in for labels and stuff like that. You know, and even I get a little nervous sometimes. Well, they're like, if things get too out of hand, you know, if gas prices get up to like six, seven dollars here, then I know things are really, really going to get fucked, you know, really, really get screwed. So I think if inflation stretches out longer it goes on, it'll definitely be the number one voting cause, and you'll have to automatically throw legal immigration in there and then. I don't. I think abortion and guns are they'll fall, fall so far down because you have you'll have people voting based on crime. You have people voting based on the doctrine in the schools, and that's the thing. Any of the parents that are voting on that, they don't care about abortions. They got kids, you know. So I don't know that guns, and that's the thing. Everybody that's voting for guns isn't necessarily voting for abortions. You know, and the demo. I think my next ever one of my next episodes is I'm gonna break down all the hypocr- hypocrisies from the Democrats. I mean, they just got so many hypocrisies. I mean, because you want to get rid, of, you want to fund the police and get rid of the guns. I mean, if you're gonna get rid of all the legal guns, then you have to have even more police. You got to have cameras everywhere. You know what I'm saying? You got to have police on a job right there to there. As soon as somebody walks up on you with a, a knife or robs you at knife point, police got to be there right there to there. Because what are you going to do? You're going to fight them off with your bare hands? And they already got laws against carrying knives as it is too. But that's the thing. 
one thing that they fail to realize is there's no law that you can create that makes criminals stop breaking these laws. Criminals are going to break whatever law you create. It doesn't matter. Whatever law you bring to the table, criminals are going to break. You know? So, yeah, man. I, I just think as long as inflation keeps going up, abortion is going to go further down, guns will go further down. I mean, all these things will go further down. But a lot of these things are off. Some of these things are offset to others. But I'm, I got, I mean, I got six things on here. And I would say crime and doctrine in schools, illegal immigration and inflation are all in favor of Republicans voting wise right now. But the fact that guns and abortions are such a big topic, those two things might off, I mean, they might outweigh three of these things. And that's only because the media, you know. And abortion is actually, and abortions and guns might offset each other though now. Think about it, because guns was the hot topic, and people knew about the Roe v. Wade was going to get overturned. It didn't officially come out, but they were waiting. And as soon as it did, now that's all they care about. I don't know the people, these abortion people don't care about guns. They're only going to vote about abortions. I don't know if there's enough of, enough of them. That's 40% of them. I don't know if that's enough. Enough. If 60%, 60% of Americans don't really have a problem with Roe v. Wade getting returned. And I think at the end of the day, like uh, being that a lot of these abortion people are women, when inflation goes further and further, they're going to a lot of women think with their pocketbook first and foremost. So the idea that all these pro-abortion people are not going to, they're going to put abortion over inflation the whole time. Not if inflation stays where it is. If gas prices, if they even stay, if it stays where it's at, if it just stays, it doesn't even, gas prices don't even drop down no time soon. They just hold. They don't even got to go up any higher. They could just hold where they're at. A lot of people going to be voting with their pocketbooks. A lot of abortion people are like, yeah, I feel you, but I'll think about abortion when the time comes because right now gas prices are high, egg prices are high, milk prices are high, bacon prices are high, meat prices are high, wheat prices are high. I mean, everything's up, you know? Everything's up. So gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting I, but to me people are always gonna vote with their wallets their pocketbooks first and foremost and if things are really really bad for their pockets and wallets and, and they stay consistently bad that's gonna not look good for democrats because these are the i mean these are the main things crime and doctrine schools legal immigration inflation abortion guns and only two of those really on the democrat side as far as voting goes abortions and guns you know, because Democrats are pushing for crazy gun control. And they are on the sides of abortions, killing kids. You know, it, it should tell you something when a political party sits there and talks about they care about the, you know, they, they sit there with this go green agenda. Like they care about the future of this country. But how do you care about the future of the country if you care about killing off? The future of the country. You care about kill. I'm gonna tell you all the government cares about is dumbing down society so they can control it's easier to control people. They don't want people knowing common sense, common knowledge. They don't want you knowing things. They want you being dumb. Dumb people are easier to control because they'll believe anything. I'm not an easy person to convince. You, you got to come with proof and evidence. I can't just take your word for it just because you say. It better make a lot of sense. It better have, if, if, if you're just bringing, you're bringing me the, the knowledge or information without showing me the facts, 
it better make a lot of common sense. Better make a lot of sense. Because if not, I'm going to be like, nah, you know. And I'm willing to be swayed off of, you know, somebody breaking down some things to me. Like breaking down facts without showing me the facts, you know. If they just make sense, you know. And Because this is the Common Sense Podcast. This is the, the college degrees, master's degree podcast. I know plenty of people with college degrees that ain't working no kind of job that's going to take them anywhere in life. College degrees, as far as I'm concerned, are overrated. Ambition is way more valuable. I mean, look at a cat like Jay-Z. I don't know David Jay-Z graduated high school. Who I don't know. I didn't. And I'm self-employed. I am self-employed. I built my business from ground up by myself, vested what money I had to invest in it to get it started. And I've created a sustainable business for the last decade, you know, because that's what the American dream is built on. But I know if I go out to vote this time, it will be because of inflation. It will be because of inflation. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't got a problem with a little bit of gun control. You're not taking away the gun, my guns. That's going to lead to a civil war. Um, I'm not with killing. I already said my last podcast, once a, once a kid has a heartbeat, I'm not with you killing it. To me, you're a cold-blooded murderer. And I don't even want to know you in my at all. I don't even want to be associated with you. I don't want to know your existence. Um, illegal immigration is not really a big issue to me. We do need to put a clamps on the legal part of it. We do need to have it all legal. legal. Um, the only reason I don't have a, such a big problem with legal immigration is because I've known people from like El Salvador and Guatemala and throughout my years here in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and they're just good, nice, hardworking people, man, that I truly have a lot of respect for, and I understand why they they, they want to come here, you know what I'm saying? Life is, is so much nicer and easier than where they're coming from, like, you know, El Salvador and, and, and places of that nature. You know, I got a good friend from El Salvador, and I don't know if he's here legally. Um, if he is, I wouldn't be shocked, you know. Uh, but good, nice, honest, decent human being, you know. I mean, except for being in here illegally, I mean, they're just, that's the thing. They're just, they're taking jobs that Americans take for granted, and then Americans want to sit there and be mad when they take the jobs. This. It's pretty hypocritical, man. I mean, I know plenty of people that act like they're too good to work at McDonald's. Like, I'll never work at McDonald's. I'm too good for that. Well, first job I ever worked was McDonald's. So there's that, you know. Um, I, yeah, so I don't really got a problem with legal immigration because these people, I, I respect people who work hard in life. I have a lot of respect for hard workers. And they're just coming here looking for jobs and they're willing to work hard at them just to get paid more than they make, you know, back where they come from. Um, the doctrine of schools, yeah, that – I don't got kids, but I'm with my sister on that. I don't want my niece and nephew, you know, being told that they were born oppressors because their skin is white. That's horse shit, you know. And crime, I mean, I, the neighborhood I moved into was – partially I moved here because there's no crime and it's nice and quiet – so I definitely don't like crime, you know. And if you take away our guns, if you take away the guns and you restrict more guns, you put more restrictions on legal guns, I guarantee there's going to be more crime. Crime will go up. That's the thing. They got to be careful with these gun restrictions because these gun restrictions are going to lead will lead to more crime 
be will lead to more people becoming victims. Won't even be go to your, you take away all the guns, all the guns legally. I, I would argue that you wouldn't be able to walk to your mailbox. You wouldn't even be able to walk to your mailbox and check your mail without getting robbed at gunpoint. Because all the legal, everybody with illegal guns would be robbing us all at gunpoint. Because y'all don't think about these things past y'all's own asshole. When y'all just start yelling, you know, gun control, gun control. Okay, but what form, what specifics, you know. And then the abortion thing, you know, like federal government. The only thing I think the federal government needs to step up and pass on a federal basis is, that's the thing. They're not even legalizing marijuana. That's the thing. They're not even passing legalizing marijuana federally. I don't care about abortions not being, like, going back to the state. I don't want to hear about people crying because abortions go back to the state where marijuana is still illegal on a federal basis. It's still on a state-to-state thing. And what is that? What is legalizing marijuana the first step in? Police reform and prison reform. So if anybody who cares about police reform and prison reform, I don't want to hear you crying because abortions went back to the state because marijuana is not a... They didn't legalize that... across the board from a federal standpoint of view. And until they do that, I don't want to hear about the rest of some of this shit. And it's not because I smoke weed. It's because it is the first step into prison reform and police reform. And they should have never had a drug war based off of marijuana. Nobody killing each other in America over marijuana. That only started in Mexico because the government making it illegal like it was, you know, the DEA, you know, going after cartels for selling marijuana, which it should have never fucking did in the first place. Cocaine, you know, fentanyl, crack, okay, that's one thing. But going after cartels for selling marijuana just because they got a monopoly, just because they got a monopoly, that's all it was about. It's because they had a monopoly. That's all it was about. The cartels had a monopoly. You know, um, yep. So we're going to give you a word from one of our sponsors and we're going to call it an episode, episode 159. Are you a musician looking for music marketing and promotion? Then look no further than Promo Palace LLC, your one stop shop for all music promotion services. Services include Spotify playlist pitching, YouTube video promotion, record pool promotion blog placements, radio airplay promotion, SoundCloud promotion, and much more. With over 2,000 customers and over 10 years of experience in online promotion, Promo Palace LLC is a company you can trust. For more info, please go to promopalace.biz. See you there. That's right. Check us out, promopalace.biz. Definitely got the Google ads running right now. Number one source for music promotions worldwide. Over 2,000 customers serve. Get your market promotions at promopals.biz, the one-stop shop for everything. Once again, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Episode 159, 44 minutes in. Of course, you know, we don't try to go over the hour mark or Instagram will not let me upload my videos. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in. Peace, and I'm out.